Oh! Greetings Wonder, this is Atlas here and welcome to The Void. Today I'm going to be reacting and breaking down uh, a song called Stardust Crusaders from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure original soundtrack. This is a song that won a poll that I did in my community tab in which I asked you which JoJo Bizarre Adventure song should I react slash break down next. And as you can see here, the vote was overwhelmingly uh, uh, towards Stardust Crusaders being Stand Proud and Virtuous Pope, the other options. So I am definitely looking forward to doing this uh, today. Uh, very specifically because I just recently finished uh, watching the first season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, including, you know, both parts, part one and part two. Which, by the way, I'm doing uh, currently uh, reactions slash breakdowns of each episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in my Patreon. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video, right? We also recently had a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure hangout in my Discord for Patreon members in which we uh, discussed the whole first season in regards to the characters, the plot, the differences in the writing in between the first part and the second part, you know, the flaws of the anime and so on and so forth. So that was very, very entertaining indeed. Also, I've done previously other themes from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, in including uh, Jorno's theme, Bloody Stream, and uh, um, the Pillar Man theme. I've done those uh, previously, so in case you're interested, I'm gonna leave uh, some of them in, the, in this card right here, but also in the description of this video, right? Finally, I would like to invite you to listen to my latest track, which is a Berserk-inspired track called Conceived in Blood, which is actually the song that you have been listening in the intro of this video. So if you like uh, the song so far and would like to listen to the full track, I'm gonna leave it in this card right here, but also in the description of this video, right? So with that being said, onward! Alright, this is going to be a Stardust Crusaders from the Jojo Bizarre Adventure original soundtrack. Boom! Okay, so far it's very upbeat. <laughs> okay. The brass doing the unison with the melody. This saxophone arrangement is really good. <laughs> the guitar is so shredding. This is crazy.
Oh! Listen to the piano part. This song is a melting pot of so many things. No synthesizer transitions. The percussion is killing it at this part. Oh my god. And it ends with the electric guitar just chugging it out. Well, it's not a chug. In but, okay, there we have it, that's it, right? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you know what? This was indeed very, very uh, surprising. Um, uh, this was not at all the prediction that I had. Like, uh, absolutely not. And still, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure soundtracks uh, still has this incredible cosmopolitan sort of approach to, to the arrangement and the composition of the music because there's so many genres and uh, music styles uh, intertwined in this, in this song. You obviously need music that is going to be, uh, you know, aligned with that premise. So I'm going to be talking more in depth about the genres that are involved in here and so, some of the arrangements specifically uh, in terms of the guitar that seems to be very much in the spearhead of what the song is about, okay? So let's break it down. But before we jump into it, I would like to show you some of the new merch that I have available in my store. This is one of the t-shirts that I have available. And as you can see, this is a design inspired by Dark Souls and Berserk. And I also have a hoodie here that I want to show you that has the same design. And I gotta tell you, the, the, the quality in these hoodies and the t-shirt is incredible, alright? So, uh, by making a purchase of either one of these uh, items, you have the chance to be featured in the intro of one of my videos. The only thing you have to do is take a picture with what you bought uh, put on, and you can send it to the contact email that I have in the description of this video, and I'll put you in one of the intros of one of my videos, okay? Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of the song is, of course, the distorted electric guitar, which is... Uh, the instrument that opens the track that is is sort of giving us the whole feel of a track but also I, I, I it seems like or it, I feel like it's the instrument from which everything else branches out you know what I mean the uh, the the electric guitar is it's like the spearhead 
uh, instrument in in this particular uh, you know in, in this particular song, and I'm also uh, I'm, I want to make a little bit of a demonstration in the in the guitar right here, in terms of the main riff that we hear because uh, I think it's very interesting how from that particular riff everything branches out into so many different uh, genres of music. All right, so let me get my guitar. Okay, so I think the main riff is. Uh, uh, or, you know, uh, quite a lot of, of what we hear is based in the blues scale, I think. Because there's a lot of chromatic uh, things going on in between the notes that would otherwise be like the the, the pentatonic scale. But, you know, the, the main riff would be something like... As you can hear, it also has this rhythm, you know, it has this uh, rhythm that is very Latin, Latin-like uh, rhythm uh, that goes along very well with the percussion that we hear throughout the song. And uh, that's one of the most interesting parts of our track, which is, uh, it, it has, of course, the electric guitar, which is very reminiscent of rock music, but it also has the rhythm of being this Latin, Latin uh, rock kind of kind of thing into it. But we're going to be talking more in depth about those things in, uh, later. But uh, you know the the riff, it's you know it has like the, this pentatonic shape, but it has uh, on top on top of that has these chromatic uh, things going on in the riff, which makes it more like the blue scale. So. You can see, you can feel the flow of the la of the Latin blood going through that riff because of the rhythm that it has, you know, which is crazy, because uh, I mean I, I was playing the the riff without the the you know obviously without the whole context of the song and very a very important context of the song in terms of having that Latin feel uh, is the the percussion, you know super latin uh, percussion but even with the la uh, with the latin percussion uh, stripped uh, out of it the only the uh, only by the rhythm of 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 the electric guitar that, that there, there is in the riff is enough to give you the latin feel so that's why i think that uh in the song everything or at least most of the song branches out from that main riff it's like the composer got the riff first in his head, you know, or or maybe he was noodling around with his guitar and came up with the riff, and then started making the whole track based upon that riff specifically. Uh, to continue the talk about the electric guitar, there is something very interesting too, and this uh, is in regards to the to the um, melting pot sort of 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 uh, characteristic that this song has, which is. Uh, you know, later after this riff plays, you can hear that it, it, uh, the, the song starts to become more melodic and you can hear these, uh, you know, sustained longer notes uh, making uh, the, the melody of a track. Uh, but the thing about, the interesting about, the thing about that is that it sounds like this very James Bond ski kind of, kind of track in, in, that sp in that specific part of a song because of course, it has the electric guitar, you know, very quintessential in terms of the of the whole British rock um, vibe that uh, James Bond songs have, uh, but also has the brass on top of it, which is this big band kind of kind of brass uh, uh, accompanying or making a unison within the melody or with the melody itself, uh, along with the guitar. So we have, so far, we have, you know, uh, 
a, you know, Latin rock, a British rock to a certain degree, a big band music w with the whole, you know, a brass ensemble and so on and so forth. And there's other uh, other couple of, of genres involved in this, which I'm going to be talking in a minute. Now, speaking of rock music, uh, there is very interesting, something uh, still very interesting, like I said before, going on in the electric guitar, that, uh, like I said, it's very much the spearhead of a song, which is, in a certain part of a song, it has this 70s, I mean, everything sounds very 70s and psychedelic, to be honest, even by the look of the cover art of the, of the soundtrack, it looks kind of 70s psychedelic kind of art, you know what I mean? It's very colorful and, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it, it's, I can't really say what, what I was going to say, but it's very alike to the, 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 the that uh, time period, I would say, which is interesting because if it Stardust Crusaders is set in the 80s, um, they definitely went, uh, at least with this particular track, they went more towards the previous decade, but I digress. Um, the rock that is involved in this track, like I said before, is Latin rock because that that comes from from the rhythm that there is in the the, the guitar riff and of course the the percussion in in the, in the song. Also, we have British rock because there is this seventies rock Bri British rock part towards maybe after, a little bit after the uh, the half of the song, which has this tremolo effect, which is like incredibly quintessential in terms of, of of giving that vibe of the 70s British rock era and also that was uh, present in the in the in the 70s rock era of 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 the US obviously but um the thing is that what the, uh, what it sets the 70s British rock kind of uh, element that there is in this track from the 70s rock US era that is in this track is that the, the, the British part has this tremolo effect and the 70s psychedelic rock part from the US has all the shredding in the, in the guitar, all the shredding that we hear in the guitar, which is uh, sort, of in the, sort of in the background of it, uh, while the main, the main melody of the, of the song uh, plays, um, that's very more that's more towards the the U.S. scene, very much specifically about uh, what Jimi Hendrix used to do in in his in his uh, songs. You know, the, the letting him, uh, you know, he used to rip uh, solos in his guitar. You know, in the blues scale and the pentatonic scale and whatnot, and that obviously fits a lot into into what this track is. And on top of that. Uh, now that I remember, you know, there's a lot, a lot of, of rock music uh, references in the first uh, season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, you know, like Zeppelin, maybe, obviously, it comes from Led Zeppelin, and, um, you know, Streisel, uh, which I think it comes from Dire Straits, and... Uh, you know, there is a lot. A Speedwagon, which is, I think it's from REO Speedwagon, like they have a lot of references to rock music every, uh, everywhere, and um, you know that the one of the th of the of the themes that is used in the outro, which I get, is runabout, I think it, it's the name. It sounds like Rush. Uh, it, it it could be even probably be a, a song by Rush or something like that. But anyways, uh, it makes sense that this song has so much of that because uh, I would believe that uh, you know a, a lot of the of of the favorite music of the writers of the of this particular uh, well the manga i would say are in, or maybe even the creators of the anime too are very much into the 70s bleeding into the 80s because reo speed one and blitz blitz a lot into the into the 80s as, as you know bands as toto and genesis and whatnot you know all that progressive rock uh scene let's say now, in my opinion, I think that the this the thing that gives this song this punk that it has is the the Latin element to it. Like, it goes in between having this Latin rock uh, thing going on in the in the main riff with the rhythm of it, towards more of a Latin jazz uh, um, 
uh, you know, thrown in into the melting pot with, with the piano arrangement that we hear. It, it it's the the piano arrangement. First of all, it's insanely amazing. Like uh, <laughs> like the the scale runs and everything that that the 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 the, the, the arrangement it has. It's incredible, but also, of course, it's it has still that Latin jazz, um, uh, you know, thing going on in it, which, like I said before, it, uh, still it's very congruent with what the main riff has, and uh, towards the whole vibe of the song, which is also, um, you know, given by the percussion of it. Then we have the piano with the Latin jazz going on, and from the beginning the Latin rock kind of vibe that we have with the guitar. But on top of that, we also have like the 70s British rock thing, the 70s psychedelic U.S. rock thing going on there. So uh, quite a melting pot so far, isn't it? Now to put the cherry on top, uh, speaking about the percussion, because because well, I'm not really sure. Uh, if there's this, the, both of these instruments are in in the percussion, but one of them is certainly is. I, I think it's either the conga or the bongos. It's either one of those, which you know are ni super niche instruments that, that they are only used in in you know Latin music like uh, you know salsa, merengue, bachata, and so on and so forth. So. They are very much into the realm of Latin music, you know. They are not so much used, or at least in my opinion, used so much outside of it. So the the introduction to of the of those instruments in the percussion and obviously the the kind of a tribal pattern that we hear in the percussion, I mean, adds so much to the very much to the very premise of this uh, uh, Latin swagger that the whole track has. But on top of that, it has drum samples and this bro step transitions that came out of nowhere but somehow they they are still congruent w with what uh, jojo's bizarre adventure is and of course this is, this is going to be some this is going to sound very cheesy but at the end of the day this is a bizarre adventure so it makes sense that the music is also sort of bizarre right so who who would have thought of making a song that has this uh, like it's a latin based has uh rock us rock and british rock into it along with big band and latin jazz and bro step you know because you can hear that not only we have drum samples uh, along the track but also we have these transitions in which we hear this in this very piercing uh very heavy synthesizers doing this crazy you know oscillations modulations in it which are very much, uh, uh, you know, a, a quintessential uh, characteristic of, of bro step, in, in my opinion. In fact, I think that, that in the first season of, of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, in 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 some of the fight scenes that w that we see in the first season, we hear a bro step, uh, a fully fledged bro step uh, track into it. So it's not so out of the of the mythos you know of of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because they already used the one of a fully fledged song in the first season so there you go so yeah this was a fantastic track i think that it's incredible how the the creators of this or, or uh, i don't know if it's multiple composers or just one composer but uh, the f how he gets away with <laughs> with uh, doing so, so many genres uh, and he, he manages to intertwine them together in a very seamless way you know it's very uh, I, I would I think this is a very thing a very hard thing to pull off you know having uh, uh, a rock essentially a rock track in general with very modern well it bros bro step is not so hot anymore that was like in 2000 in between 2008 and, uh, and 2013 maybe but anyways uh, compared to the rock elements that we hear it's very modern i would say right so it, you mix that with the big band thing which is something very very much from the 50s um uh, the rock thing that I already mentioned, and the Latin jazz, uh, being in the in the improvisation in the piano, also the saxophones, I, I, as a saxophone uh, solo that we hear, I forgot about that. Uh, you know the Latin percussion, and, and on top of that, you have the the drum samples and and the 
these pro step transitions with these very piercing heavy synthesizers <laughs> it's like it's very bizarre that's it basically <laughs> so yeah i think i'm gonna give this track a golden batch thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please give it a like and share it with your friend also, please don't forget to visit my Patreon, my coffee profile, and my coffee store in case you want to uh, support my work further, and my Teespring merch shop. And of course, ex nihilo, mihil fit.